I have this tattoo on my wrist where actually the first time I tried to commit suicide, I tried to cut my wrist that says believe because my mother's always talked about either if you don't believe in yourself, then who's going to believe in you? It forced me to work harder. It forced me to put my head down. Now there's some disadvantages to that too. You can get lost in the work process and not be present to some of the things that are happening in your life. But I, I think that mentality and, and being around people that inspired me, not by their words, but more so by their actions. Uh, I hear a lot of people talk every single day. And I was one of these guys, Tom, when I, when I was playing things the right way. But I think for everybody, you get into this preachy thing about, look at me, look about what I do. Mm -hmm. And I started not to listen to what people said, but started to watch how people acted and how they interacted with other people. And that helped me set the bar for where I wanted to be. Anymore, um, I, I think I just, I always want to get better. I think I'm a little bit relentless in that, in that capacity. And uh, I found relevance in the process of, it's not always going to be easy. There are going to be challenges. There's still going to be curveballs thrown at me. But I, I, I can't become uh, introverted. I, I have to continue to get outside myself because when you're uncomfortable, that's the only way you're going to grow. For 10 plus years after my accident, I was, I held a lot of animosity because like, I see guys that I was better than, that I thought I was better than, I thought I was better than everybody. I mean, that's, <laughs> it, it, it can't, I, you have to be crazy to be great at something, right? right. Um, and seeing these guys that were signed this $135, $150 million contract, and that used to sit me so, I was so angry about it. God, isn't it? No, why the hell me? Like, what did I do to deserve this pain for the rest of my life? But you, you never get better if you're not willing to put in the time. And basketball is very similar to the game of life. There's gonna be ups and downs. Sometimes you may turn the ball over seven times in a row. But if you put in the work and you constantly put in the work, you can't allow that one mistake to go into the next play. If you allow seven turnovers to go into my next possession with the basketball or that next possession in life, if you allow that divorce or if you allow that passing away of somebody or that loss of a career to go into the next eight plays, you'll have another eight turnovers. You have to be willing to say, that was back there, that happened, but it doesn't mean it needs to happen now. But I remember we were playing against the Lakers, Tom, and we were out here in LA. And, um, you know, like I always try to outwork people, right? That's just how I made my mark. So the game was at seven. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna come to the Staples Center. Cause we're playing, this is when the Lakers had Kobe and Shaq. Right. Okay, this is, this is like the championship Lakers. I was like, you know, I'm gonna get there at three o'clock. And I wanna make sure I make 400 made shots before I go back into the room. And then I sit in the sauna and I get ready for the game. So, you know, get in the car, get to the gym, get there, and as I'm walking onto the court, who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant, already working out. So I put my sneakers on, and so once I set my foot across that line, I started working out. And so I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down, and of course I still hear the ball bounce. He was working out, for like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here. Right and he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant or <laughs> lazy. He's doing like game moves. Get in the sauna, get ready for the game. That game, he drops 40 on us, okay? And after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. Like, I, I have to understand like why, why he, he works like that. Right. So after the game is over, I'm like, hey, Kobe, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, because I saw you come in. that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. Right. And it was the first time I started to see this level of competitiveness where I said, I need to start doing more. It 
It's amazing how many people you talk to don't actually think for a second about trying to become better. You're so busy in the minutia and the, the clutter that you're running through your life with your head down. And uh, it was the first time I had to sit and evaluate. And that process within itself is rewarding, peaceful to my soul and my spirit, but still, still drives me because I still know I have such a long way to go and I, I have to continue the process and never stop. And just let people know that this, if you're lucky, if we're lucky, you're always going to be a work in progress. And you have to want to work. And she said, you know what, if you were to allocate a percentage of the energy that you put into your career, into yourself, and learning more about yourself, and learning more about yourself in relationships, you'll be successful. And it was the first time I had to sit back and say, wow, that's, that's really powerful. Because I think a lot of people, when you have to start addressing other things, you get mentally tired. But when there's an unknown, something that you haven't felt like you mastered, I don't, I'm unsure about it, when it gets frustrating, I go, you know, who are you going to be? Are you gonna be that person that wallows in their self-pity? Are you gonna be that person that says, you know what, okay, I did this wrong, I did that wrong, but how can I be better? And I think that's what I talk about, that relentless mentality right. to want to be better at just life in general. This muscle here, since I lost my nerve, I, it's gone away and I have drop foot. So my game had to change. And very much like life, you're used to doing one thing at 21, it's different than when you're 35 years old, right? right? Um, and I had to be open enough and vulnerable, vulnerable enough to accept the fact that my game had to be different in order for me to be effective. But like I said earlier, it's so hard when my brain sees things and my body before, I guess this is a gift of being an athlete to that caliber. Right, I see it gone, right? If I bring the ball down the court and there's a screen coming you know, to your right and you glance over, if I see your eye glance within that split second, I'm gone. Because right. I see you take your eye off of me. So now all of a sudden my game's changed at 21 years old. Now all of a sudden that first step is like, it's molasses, <laughs> it's non-existent, right? So now am I willing to say, I'm not that fast anymore? I have to work you into the screen. I have to take my time. I have to actually come off shoulder to shoulder. Um, I have to use my body more to create separation. Hey, my jump shot wasn't the best. I have to be a better shooter because I don't have that explosion anymore. And a lot of people say, hey, that seems pretty easy, but to mentally accept that I'm a different person now um, and to help other people see I'm a different person was, was challenging. And the major part that was the most difficult was seeing myself so as an athlete i was used to people looking at me in a state of awe right and it was something you kind of you thrive for you work your entire life for so when the kid or when somebody was would come up to me you're like oh my god tom like, your show is amazing right and you're used to that affirmation of what you do you're like all right it's worth me putting the time whereas that look for me changed and that look really made me depressed too because it was a look from oh my god you're amazing to a look of oh my god i'm so sorry right or what what happened or you used to be that guy before you you messed up and people don't say things maliciously they say things more so because they're it's awkward and they want to start a conversation and those things would drive me insane and, and tim forced me to talk to him about those things it was the first time i started having conversations i'm talking like on the court <laughs> i'll be on the court doing a drill and he's like, you have drop foot. And all of a sudden I would attack the drill a little bit more. And I, you know, next drill, he'd be like, you know, it used to be that guy, you were good. And I would, let's get up more shots. So he, he started to find ways to motivate me mm. and started to take the anger out of the equation for me too. And that was, a, that was a hell of a first step in the process of me rebuilding who I was as a person. For two or three years, I thought I was living a fucked up dream. Mm. And I kept waiting to wake up. I kept waiting to wake up. Tim was the first person that forced me to talk. To talk. Just to talk. And it's amazing when you just open your mouth and you start saying how you really feel about stuff. I mean, think about it. how many people really say how they feel. Virtually nobody. Exactly. 
I associated bigger with monetary value. So for me, it was like, hey, I could have made 250 million in my NBA career. How do I, how do I achieve that? Right. Like that's, that's the goal, that's what bigger means. And bigger has changed for me to now meaning impact, right? So yes, I do want to have my own media network one day. Um, I do want to help other people film content. I, I love content. But I'd rather, I rather be, I don't worry about the money now. The money's gonna take care of itself. If I impact people, the rest will happen. Mentally, right. like that's a story. Like that's a, that's a story that should be cherished for younger kids out there, for older people out there, it doesn't matter. You don't have to come back and do what you did before and do it exponentially better. You have to come back better as a person and, and, and really value that process. Like that's a comeback, like that's, that, that should be an American story. You approach things with a completely different mentality than a person who feels like they're going to be a victim. You start becoming the hunter again. And the more you can stay with that hunter mentality, it will pay dividends down the line. There was a guy who lived outside my apartment and I, I have a place in Tribeca, I've worked really hard for it. And it would shatter my soul every morning when I would get up in my apartment and I have these, these big windows and I look out and I see this guy mm. who's homeless, right? And, um, and I was sitting there one day and I saw so many people just going by him, just on their phone, not paying attention to him. Um, not that he was looking for attention at all. and. Uh, I got out of my apartment, I went down and I started talking to him and you start finding out this guy and his story and where he's from and you know, the fact that he lost his daughter in a really bad accident. He used to work on Wall Street and his wife divorced him and you know, he, he, can't, he can't pick up the pieces. But he said something that was so powerful to me. Because in the, in the moment when he was talking about all his frustrations, he, he said, you know what though? I am where I am and only I can change it. You know, as much as we're talking, you are the only person that can change it. At the end of the day, people can want to help you as much as they want to help you. And I, I don't think complaining is the answer either. You have to want to take yourself to a different place. And if you don't have that, then you're going to stay stuck. And a lot of people choose to stay stuck. And we see it every single day. And like, you know, people say, I can't believe you got yourself out. I'm like, I'm still getting myself out of it. And it's never going to stop. And that's a good thing because it could have stopped on June 19th. And if it had stopped on June 19th, 2003, how sad would that have been that I wouldn't even have been able to spend time reflecting on the shit that I was doing. I hope that I can help other people get out of their own way. You have to drive your own car, and if you don't drive it, someone else can drive it for you. Mm. And that, that other person who's driving it may not be a person, it may be a darkness, that entity that we talked about, that is easy to get lost and consumed in. I'm still clawing. I don't think you ever claw your way out. I, I do this when I do talks and it's amazing to see how squirmish and uncomfortable people get. 
You hear that? That's the only person you're dealing with is you mm. when you're quiet. It's fascinating. It's fascinating to look inside yourself or to spend time with yourself. And whenever I do a talk or when I talk to people who I think are going through a lot of pain, I first tell them, okay, I understand what you're going through, but you just need to stop for one second. Because what we have a tendency to do is we over inundate ourselves with other things that really don't matter to keep ourselves busy, to keep not thinking right. about the things that do matter. So once you're finally able to stop yourself and you're present with yourself, you have to go back and you have to address it. I'm not saying that you're gonna find a conclusion right then and there, but you have to recognize that whatever happened did happen. And I try to push people to find silver linings. I, I think there's truly a silver lining in everything. And once again, it's what you choose to focus your energy on. If you choose to focus your energy on all the things that God took away from you, or whatever entity that is that you believe in took away from you, then you will be consumed with that energy. If you try to force yourself to be consumed with the silver lining, even if you revert back, you have to remind yourself of the silver lining because it gives you a target goal. Like, you know, it, it's mental targeting. Are you able to focus on something that allows you to get out of your own way? If you don't have a goal to help you get out of your own way, you will be stuck. So what is that? Is that your wife? Is that your parents? Whatever you need to use to be better for, you have to do that. And you have to find that this is only gonna come from listening to yourself and spending time with yourself.